Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing this really cute little picture. This is from um, Johanna Basford's TEDx Aberdeen um, free download, so there will be a link to that in the description so you can download it too. And we're going to do all these little bits and pieces. Um, I've chosen my Black Widow's pencils just because um, they give quite vibrant um, colour and keep their point well. So I'm going to start off with this little bit in the bottom of each of these. I've just grabbed the wrong colour though, so that's useful. I'm going to do them with, I'm being very indecisive, this is my third colour I picked <laughs> and I'm going to go with the Toxic Green. Um, this is the spider set from the Black Widow, um, just in case you're wanting to sort of match up. And I'm going to do the grass here and I'm just going to do little circle shapes here to, uh, to try and give an even coverage. Actually with grass, doing a directional um, colouring doesn't can help because you get it looks like the little blades but because this is such a small picture the individual blades can you imagine how small they would be so I'm not going to try and do them all now for this picture because I've got these bottles something I've observed about other people who have done lovely pictures in bottles um, is that they do a really intense coloured background and then when they put the um, they can make the bottle look shiny by putting a um, white pen on. I have tried this effect myself and it works to some extent but I find think that perhaps I'm not using vibrant enough colour in the background and that's the reason I decided I wouldn't use my Stedler Ergosoft pencils which again keep their point really well because I felt that they may not quite give me the um, vibrancy that I wanted. I'm going to go over the top with the Cicada to uh, overemphasize this, uh, ooh, that one's broken, to, uh, you know, get some more colour down because we want, the more layers we have, the more vibrant it will be. I'm pressing too hard really, quite hard. I've got a really thick paper that I'm using. Um, but with a lot of the um, free downloads and other things, I pr if I'm printing out something to colour myself, I use Bristol board. Um, I use the De La Rowney. Now again, there's a link in the description if you want to go and have a look at it. It is quite expensive, um, but I just really like it for me. It works really well. It's um, it's quite thick. That's the only thing you have to be wary of. My printer struggles a little bit. It sometimes sounds like it's getting stuck. It never has. But be really careful. Check the thickness of that your printer can take. If you're not sure, um, big tip. Um, either look in the manual. If you don't have the manual, they'll be all online. If you just go to into your favourite search engine, click, um, type in the exact name and model number of your printer and put manual. You'll probably be able to download one and it'll be free off the uh, manufacturer's website. Um, otherwise, just um, message the um, manufacturer um, through, so through their social media or if they have a sort of um, help system on their website and you'll be able to get find out um, what thickness of paper it will take. Now I'm going to just sort of start here with these trees on this one first. I'm going to use my darker green which is the fan green for the trees. It's what I was going to use for the grass and I realise it's way too dark for grass but it's a great colour for pine trees. Now, I'm not doing any funky shading or anything on these, it's too small they probably aren't, to be fair. You could do it. In fact, why not? Let's do a little bit. I sharpened these too sharp, didn't I? I put just put a new blade in my sharpener and it's uh, it's really making a very um, um, a very sharp point. And I'm just too heavy handed for a point that sharp. So I'm just going to darken them on this side. Just a little bit. Just make it look like the light is coming from over here. We haven't of course done anything special with the grass, that's all very even, but I think that's okay. Now I'm going to do a background on each of these little pictures too, but I'm going to leave that till last. Um, sometimes I do my backgrounds first, sometimes last, but I, th 
think with all these tiny little details it's easier to do the details first but I did I was actually um, chatting with someone earlier about backgrounds I'm going to continue and use this very dark fan green on the leaves here and some of the leaves here just to make there some consistency across the different um, pictures and she was asking me for some background tips and my biggest tip which I gave her was if you're scared of ruining a picture with a background then do your background first um, because if you've put in hours and hours, days, months, even weeks or whatever of work on a picture you don't want to then pop your background in and ruin it um, so do, you know so do your background first and then you've got no picture to ruin another tip is to if you want to practice a new background technique you could do it in a sketchbook or on a rough piece of paper but if you want to do it on a colouring page use a download like this I'm just making colour decisions while I'm talking I'm just going to layer this one up a little bit more um, use downloads like this and if it all goes horribly wrong it's not in your book because I know some people find it very frustrating um, that um, um, they find it frus frustrating if they look through their book and they find a picture that they did in the past and they dislike and they feel cross and want to rip it out and I've never done that I've, I've had pictures I've been disappointed with some of them I've gone back to and touched up later others of them I didn't tell you I changed back to the cicada sorry I've been wittering and not concentrating um, but I have gone back and changed some pictures before that I wasn't happy with but I think it'd be a shame to rip it out because it's all a learning experience I'm going to use this cicada on top of these as well just to uh, make them look a slightly different colour and to increase the vibrancy there we go okay now we've got this roof and house now I could yeah, I'd be very tempted just to do the roof grey because that's what I usually do for roofs I have done it for the roofs over here but I'm not going to do that I'm going to do it red just because be a bit more interesting won't it now I'm going to use the ladybug colour which is the slightly more orangey red now it's quite small so I'm just going to do a light layer over and think about what I'm doing with it do I want to shade it because it's tiny I'm going to have a go at doing it just a little bit darker on the top of each of those tiles it probably won't even be visible maybe it is there we go and I'm going to do there's a little piece across the top of the roof which um, I'm just going to tidy up but my pencils are all over the place um, which I am going to do in a grey maybe a black actually my black is called um, Black Widow and I shall just do that in the black just so that it stands out a little bit and then we've got oh we haven't done the uh, tree trunk going to do that in our darkest brown which is Huntsman so we'll do those again nothing fancy it is too small just a streak of colour now I'm going to do the windows on the house next so that I know what I'm doing colour wise so I'm going to use the egg yolk that's a great name for colour don't you think and pop that in it also looks slightly orangey but on the nib but when I colour it it looks quite yellow and we've got the flower middles here and I'm going to do them the same I don't always do flower middles yellow but I think this will look nice and vibrant I can do those the same again just for some consistency in colours between oh I don't know what happened to my accent then between <laughs> different things now the house and the flowers do I do them the same colour I'm going to do no, I was going to do the flowers blue, but that's a mistake because the background's going to be blue. So I'm going to do the flowers pink and I'm going to use cyanide pink and I'm going to do all of them the same. You could do them all different. I sometimes feel that having the same helps 
it to look more linked together. Some people are brilliant at having loads and loads of different colours and it working really well. And I went into a chemist today and they sold makeup brushes and I still forgot to buy one. Anyway, um, some people have a knack of doing loads of colours and it looks amazing. I don't have that knack so I'm going to stick to the same colours for those. House, I'm not going to do this colour, it's too close to the roof colour. I'm thinking I'm going to go with this um, oh, toadstool colour which is an orangey colour. I'm looking at these trees and wondering if I'd miss that tree trunk. Is that a tree trunk there? I'm not entirely sure. And I'm going to do the chimneys in this colour as well. I think that is a tree trunk there. Um, these are the um, huntsmen in there. I'm pretty sure. It doesn't look like it's the middle of the tree though. It's probably the side of the house. Hmm. Oh well, it's brown now. That's, that's, that's done. Right, we have done all the insides apart from the sky. So I'm going to do a slight gradient if I can. So I'm going to start with my zephyr blue which is dark and start this off at the bottom here. I want it to be quite dark as I say. I want um, quite a intense colour so that hopefully the um, white pen shows up when we do that in a minute. So you see I'm just fading it a bit because I'm going to put another colour blue in and do the same on this one. So really dark, lots of layers at the bottom. Try and go right up to the edge of the leaves. If you overlap slightly it won't matter. You might see it on the camera when I do it but when you're looking at yours unless you've got a magnifying glass you won't see it. Fade that up a bit. You see how I'm doing less um, layers of colour, a bit less pressure to fade it up. And towards the end, I'm just kissing the page with the pencil, really gentle. And here we've got a few gaps that we need to fill in with the dark. Take it off a bit because I'm feeling very hot all of a sudden. Just had a cup of tea before I came on and I think it's just getting through. Right, this is the Starry Night which is the next blue. Uh, which is a very pretty shade of blue. Now I'm going to fade this all the way to the top because the other blue I've got is a bit too light. But I shall use it on top of this but this will make it a bit darker it's quite a pretty colour as you can see hopefully you may not agree we've all had different on what colours we like and dislike aren't we it's interesting I didn't used to like pink very much and then I got World of Flowers and I did one picture that was pink where I had see, was inspired by someone else's beautiful picture and I tried to copy it and theirs was all in pink so I used some pinks from my polychromo set and I combined them in a certain way to get the effects that I wanted and suddenly I got really into that particular shade of pink so it's a sort of it's the pink carmine colouring colours so it's I'm still not that keen on sort of a Barbie pink, as I call it, although it has its place. But um, the carmine, most carmine, and that sort of thing, they're really pretty. So I've learned to love pink as well. I think green is probably still one of my favourites though, which is lucky because there's a lot of green in Johanna's books just trying to get around this plant it's a little bit awkward so I'm going to grab the lightest blue 
and this is the forget-me-not you can see it's really very pale and just just tickle it over the edge just to lighten that down a little bit but blending it in it actually looks quite bare that sky doesn't it but that might work in our favour Oh, I'm going to do all the white pen at the end because otherwise I will just smudge it everywhere. Probably. There. Now the liquid in this test tube, I'm going to do this light blue colour. I want. I thought it looked like, might look like copper sulphate solution for anyone who's done chemistry really pretty colour. This is probably not quite dark enough. I'm going to make this quite dark like that and I think it just needs a little bit of darker colour. Just around the edge. Just to where it might be darker. There. Now we've got this magnifying glass to do. I'm going to use a black for the handle and the frame. I'm not really sure. Um, can you see? Yeah, just about. My lamp is making a shadow. Let's go that way. So I'm going to do quite a dark, intense bit there and just lighten it. And then do the reverse from the bottom. It just makes it look like it's maybe a little shiny plastic handle. And we'll do the same here with a dark bit here. Just gently take the pressure off as you come up the sides. And the same here. And then it just looks like it's a bit of a shiny plastic um, magnifying glass. Now I'm going to grab my spider web and I'm going to add some grey into here. We leave a little gap in the middle. Hopefully it will look a bit more glassy like the light's catching it. We need to do the bottles. So I'm going to do a similar thing with grey. And then just reduce the layers and pressure towards the middle of each of these bits. So each of the sides. And hmm, put a little bit of grey on the test tube as well. I like this sheet because this channel has given us some really different things to co colour. I've never coloured a test tube before. And here, I'm going to go darker here and lighten towards the middle. And leave a little gap. And the same on this one, so dark here and then lighter. Same, follow the same pattern here so it sort of matches down the side just the same leave it in the middle just take it up part the way and there and the same on the bottom there we go now we've got the lids oh hang on I haven't done the top of here do the same here and then Darker here and leave a gap in the middle. There we go. Now the lids. Um, I could have done them black, but I think that's going to be a little bit boring. So, hmm, let's do them. We could, I know, we'll do the this one, we'll do the ladybug, which is the colour of the roof. Okay, and we'll, we want to make this look more cylindrical because it's a round bottle I'm guessing so if we do more colour on the edges or more intense colour and then reduce the pressure to let the white of the paper come through and then it looks like it's shining it gives us the impression that this is nearer to us than these bits and that there's some shade shadow in the bottle it isn't brilliant illusion but it's a little bit now this one will do the colour of the flowers so we had our cyanide pink, 
and we'll use the same technique where we go in harder here and lighter. You could do this as a cork of course rather than a sort of screw top lid or it could be a pink cork or we know it's going to be quite pale on the top there because it might be catching more of the light. There we go. Now we've got the pencils to do and I think I'm going to use the um, yeah, I'm going to use the lid colours. So this, I'm going to do the cyanide pink one for this one though, just so it mixes it up a little bit. I might need that rubber on the end, um, eraser. Sorry, on the end of the pencil as white, but we'll see. This is the ladybug. I might do it grey actually. A lot um, erasers on the ends of pencils are a little bit greyish. I never buy pencils with erasers on. Oh, <laughs> nearly dropped it. It's a spider web. We'll pop it on the end uh, and there. Now the end of the pencil would be a little bit wooden. I'm having a little we've got I'm gonna pick my lightest um brown, which is the stink bug, and just put a little bit on the tip of each pencil. And these labels, I want them to be brown so they look a bit like their craft paper. I don't think this looks very brown, actually it's a bit yellowy isn't it? It's probably okay for wood. I can't show you pencil wood, it's this one, these are black. I think we'll go in with a slightly darker shade, whoops, oh I'm knocking my pencils everywhere. Um, foxy brown, and we'll go back over that. Maybe we'll leave it a little bit paler in the middle and do it darker around the edge and then just soften it towards the middle. go. Now have I done everything? I just want to check before I get my white pen out. Uh, yeah. Now I'm thinking what size of pen. I've got my jelly roll pens here. I've got uh, 8, 10 and 5. I think the 5 is going to be a little bit too fine. I think the 10 might be too big. So I'm going to opt for the 8. And we're going to do some shine on these bottles. I'm just going to scribble it on a rough piece of paper and go for it. So I'm going to do a thickish line down here, which doesn't want to show up a little bit. Hmm. And then down this side a little bit, and a little line and some dots. It doesn't show up, so I'm going to grab my number 10 because it tends to be a bit better. Should we do the other? We do this one first. One problem we may have is if the white doesn't settle well on the particular colour of bottle. Um, the colour underneath because you'll find with some colours the white just absorbs the the colour this really doesn't want to work does it oh. try it on the test tube won't show it very well on the grey there we go that's better um, and what I have observed is that the blue seems to be turning pink. Do you see that stripe down there? It's gone very pink. So that's interesting. Now you can go over them and keep going over them but they need to be dry first. Now I do have noticed I've got a line going across here in sort of ready orange colour. I think that was from one of the other pictures I did. I accidentally um, slipped with my um, pencil and drew on this bit. I did try and rub it out before I did this one but it didn't work. So I'm just cleaning the nib of my pen really well. So I've got this piece of paper and wrapping it around the nib and just cleaning all the paint off it. And then I'm going to pump my pencil, pen up and down. I'm going to do it on my page to try and release some more um, paint or gel. I don't know what's in a gel pen. It's called a gel pen. Is it gel? I don't really know. So we're going to 
go back down here and hope that it gives us a better line. I still don't think it's properly dry. hopefully you get the idea and you can just mess around with this and guess where to put your line how thick to make it etc oh, I rubbed that one right out didn't I? I come on mm. there we go I'm gonna leave it there or else I'm just gonna spoil it but that's um, so the fact that it's gone pink that's to do with the pencil underneath that's nothing to do with the gel pen it does the same with the posca pen or whatever the fact that it hasn't written very well i think it's more to do with the age of my pen i do have a um a posca pen which i may just try i'm just going to clean the nib of that because it's really really mucky i've got no paint coming out of that at all because i think it's run out i'm just going to give it a shake There we go. It's working now. Oh, that's better. Much better. Now it can feel a bit um, counterproductive putting pen over the top of what you've coloured, but you couldn't just leave a white gap. It really wouldn't work. Now, there is a mistake on a few of these. This one here, this line needs to be as parallel with the edge of the bottle as possible and it is sloping inwards. And this one is sloping outwards. So that doesn't help us with our illusion. The other ones are a bit better. So um, that's something you need to be a little bit careful of. But I am done with that. So um, thank you very much for having the patience to um, keep watching when my pens didn't work. And uh, well done for getting through it. Um, thank you so much for watching and happy colouring.